Ndigibo residents in Abuja celebrate New Year festival. Village elections in the Philippines claim the lives of three people. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. I am Friska Wonko, and now the details of the news. Anambra State Deputy Governor Dr. Nyeka Chuku Ibezim has assured that Governor Chukuma Saludo led administration will complete all the roads under construction across the state soon and commence new ones alongside other critical projects that will make the state exceptional. The Deputy Governor stated this during a rally organized by Anambra Central Zona Wing of Salundo Ambassadors at Umudioka Hall in Oka, Oka San local government area. Government House Correspondent Emmanuel Okonko tells us more. Deputy Governor Bezim said that the government of Professor Soludo is on a mission to change the narratives in governance in Anambra State and to transform the fortunes of the citizenry. Dr. Bezim appreciated the state's residents on their support to the government of Professor Soludo, promising that in months to come, evidences of good governance will be enormous in the state. He then called on the Soludo ambassadors to be true ambassadors of the governor, whom he said is known for excellence and warned them against sabotaging his good works and efforts. These are ambassadors. If you go to the streets, behave like Soludo. There must be orderliness in what we are doing. Only a man did it. Now, okay. by this time next year, Come. Let me take you to where you will see and believe. Earlier in a remark, the managing director of Oka Capital Territory Development Authority, Mr. O.C. Onuko, who is the leader of the Soluda Ambassadors and the convener of the event, thanked the governor for showing huge interest in Oka through construction of roads around the town and political appointments to Oka sons and daughters, promising that Oka community and the Soludo ambassadors will continue to support his leadership for more equitable distribution of democracy dividends across the state. <laughs> On his part, the national president of Anambra State Association of Tan Unions, Barrister Titus Abudo, encouraged Oka people and entire Andi Anambra to keep supporting Governor Soludo led administration for a better Anambra. <laughs> Speaking, an Abga critical stakeholder in Oka, Ozo Ochijemod Lim, rated Professor Soludo administration high in human capital development observing that his human-oriented approach to governance will in no distance time set the state on the global map the more. In Oka, I am Emmanuel Okonkwo reporting for ABS News. The Anambra State Association, ASA Women, a United States of America, and ASA Women Cancer Coalition in Nigeria have organized breast and cervical cancer outreach program for indigent women, women in the state. ABS health correspondent Chibuzo Okoye completes the reports. The medical outreach program held at the Jero Mudoji State Secretariat, Oka, was in collaboration with the Anambra State Ministry of Health and featured free cancer screening, distribution of Anambra State Health Insurance Agency ASHA enrollment cards to 50 beneficiaries, as well as presentation of check of 2 million Naira grant to two cancer survivors. The chlorine event opened the host and founder of 
ASA Women USA. Dr. Mrs. Uche Ume stressed that ASA Women USA is committed to helping to provide health care access to indigent Anambra women, including breast and cervical cancer patients, as well as other maternal concerns, calling on privileged individuals to invest in the establishment of the Anambra State Comprehensive Cancer Center in the Newi South local government area. And ASA Women USA Cancer Coalition in Nigeria which is to provide healthcare access to the indigent women with breast and cervical cancer through a number of state health insurance scheme and to promote screening and prevention of the disease, which affects one in eight women in the United States every year and 2.3 million women Worldwide. In his remarks, the Anambra State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Afamo Bidike, who thanked the group for using their resources to help the indigent people, noted that the Anambra State Governor, Professor Chuko Maseludo, is taking a holistic approach in improving healthcare service delivery in the state by upgrading facilities at the primary healthcare centers, even as the governor's wife, Nonye, is equally giving a boost to the fight against cancer, resulting in free screening of over 11,000 women and free treatment of more than 3% of the number that tested positive, adding that the fight will be sustained in the interest of the Anambra. They have your insurance coverage. All the money. And they don't have one who is governor in the both cervical cancer and the mention of primary health care and so they have to check it. I'm not going to be able to get cancer and actually be the treat for the level. On his part, the Anambra State Commissioner for Culture, Entertainment and Tourism, Mr. Don Orenji, said that the diaspora desk in his ministry has helped in strategic engagement with the Asa Women USA and assured the support of his ministry for more interventions from the Anambra in the diaspora, even as he called for more support from privileged individuals and groups in the fight against cancer. Earlier, the chairman of the occasion and the Up Progressives Grand Alliance presidential candidate in the 2020 23 general elections and former chief judge of Anambra State, Professor Peter Umadi, noted that screening for early detection of cancer is key to solving the health problem and commended the state government for the planned comprehensive cancer center in the state. Anambra State Governor's wife, Nonye Seludo, represented by a former Anambra lawmaker, Mrs. Antonia Tabansi Okoye, Executive Secretary of Asia, Dr. Simeon Oyemechi, represented by Dr. Ngozi Fedio, said that the ASA Women USA program has far reaching positive effects in healthcare service delivery in the state. Mrs. Seludo, among others, received awards at the event in Oka. This is Chibu Zokoye for ABS News. The president of the World Christian International Ecumenical Center Worldwide, Right Reverend Ike Chuku Ekwemo, has revealed that the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Ipob, Mazi Namdekano, will be released before the 15th of December, 2023. Right Reverend Ekwemo gave the revelation during a four-day national ecumenical prayer conference, which took place at the Anambra State Ecumenical Center, Aglary, Anambra East Local Government Area. Correspondent Chibuzobidike filed on this report. The annual prayer conference is an avenue for members of the Christendom to seek God's divine intervention in order to enthrone peaceful coexistence and security of lives and property. The conference is an initiative of Bishop Ekwemmo to present issues bothering Ndibo to God and also thank him for his gift of life. According to the convener, Bishop Ekwemmo, the prayer conference is scheduled across the four market days in Igbo land to unify every Onyibo for positive turnaround, even as he made it clear that Ndibo are waiting for the homecoming of Mazi Namdekano and assured that according to a vision given to him by God, the 15th December date is sacrosanct. Don't want to watch it on Saturday, but I want to watch it on Sunday, for the Sunday, Sunday, but Ndibo naturally and culturally. Well, that's a four market days. Eke seem to be the head of Nyayisi, Afia, Nibonaz, Azuka, Azuya, 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 Azuya. So four days, I'm going to attach it. I'm going to put it in there. As an alusidio tour, number ten, we're going to do this. Man, now Christ is big. He ain't in any redeem. He ain't in. 
In a paper presentation, Professor Chukwemeka Eze revealed that the hatred and marginalization against the Igbo dated back to the colonial masters who saw Ndi Igbo as challengers to their economic aspirations. Hence, built the seed of discord against the Igbo people, pointing out that the recurring issues facing the Southeast can be overcome with love, faith in God, and quality education for children and empowerment for youth. That in spite of the challenges we the Igbos face, in spite of the trauma of persecution we face, that if we have faith in the Lord, and if we have worked hard as Abraham worked hard to, to make God happy, then we will overcome our persecution. During his ministration at the event, Pastor Jeremiah Ihena Tuoha reminded Ndibo that despite the long oppression they face, they should be committed and seek the face of God, who in the shortest time will liberate them. Due to the oppression, we have in this country. That is why everybody knows that this election is manipulated. So that is why we are praying for the Igbo people, so that God will intervene in our case because it is only God that can help us. No man can help you. At the event, Mrs. Agatha Egenti shared her experiences in the participation of the annual prayer conference and called for more commitment in the things of God. Ordination of evangelists, apostles, and deaconesses formed the high points of the event. The body of late Reverend Canon Peter Chukudi Neji has been laid to rest at his hometown, Ubaha Moba Village, Ubaho, Okija, Ihele County area of Anambra State. Late Canon Chukudi, before his death as an Anglican priest, a husband to a lay reader charity, Noya Lim, and a father of four. Correspondent Justice Unyemobi filed in this report. In his sermon, the Bishop of Newi Diocese, Right Reverend Ndubisiobi, extolled late Canon Chukudi for investing so much in his children, both physically and spiritually, raising them to toe the lines of godliness while urging the children to strive to maintain the peace and unity that exists in the family before now. While appreciating those that came to console them at the Basilica of St. Peter Okija, the first son of the family, Prince Christian Neji, maintained that the father died a natural death, having survived Biafra War, where he sustained a bullet on his head, which he had been battling with until his death. Thanked God for the kind life that their father lived. We make sure that we are educated to the level we are now. So, as he is led to less today, I say may God grant him eternal rest. In laws that came to honor our father, I'm saying may God grant them safe return to their various destinations. In an interview, the second son of the family, Dr. Ifa Neji, the third son, Professor Lutana Neji, the only daughter, Ms. Chiamaka Neji and his daughters-in-law, Mrs. Uchen Neji and Mrs. Gloria Chizoba, all asked God to give them the strength to bear the loss because according to them, he is irreplaceable and prayed that his gentle soul would continue to rest in the bosom of the Lord. Lending his voice, the Chief Executive Officer, Best Brain Contest and Chairman Akwaza Group, Honorable Frank Ibojindo, described the deceased as a good man and narrated how he took care of him because he considered him to be an intelligent and exceptional child, saying that he also contributed so much in making him what he is today. I remember that when I was growing up, uh, as young as I was then, money had very close because of my intelligence. So I would have as an exceptional child, a godfather, a, a, a godson. Then uh, even my, my dad, he was a very close friend to my dad. Uh, so he's a good man. And he always brings difference into that place. The event, which was planned and managed by an award-winning Abaza Group event planners, also featured special rendition by St. Stephen's Choir, St. Christopher's Choir, 
condolence visits by relatives, in-laws, friends and different church groups who came to sympathize with the family. Archbishops, bishops, all indigenous priests, clergymen from Newi and Ihiala diocese, including representative of Bishop of Gogolada Diocese Abuja, the Right Reverend Moses Tabuaye, among others, we are on ground to pay their last respect to the departed. Mpolais the Naka Oyi Council area has elected Obwefi Obiora Anachina as a new traditional ruler of the community. The emergence of the monarch followed the keenly contested election witnessed by the 15 age grade, making up their town held at Hilter Primary School, Mkwale Izunaka. Correspondent Odinaka Mulisa completes the details. The monarch, who emerged victoriously with a total of 406 votes, to beat two other contenders, including a former president general of the town, Elder Chris Eluomuno, who scored 236 votes, came second. Chief Damian Oduche came third with 174 votes, commenced with accreditation of eligible members. According to the people, the Igwe ship election was informed by the need to institute a monarch that will steer the affairs of the town as the stool has remained vacant for decades. Addressing the participants on behalf of the Commissioner for Chieftaincy and Local Government Affairs, Mr. Ike Chukumbuike registered state government's interest towards the peaceful conduct of the election, advising the contenders not to see it as a do or die affair, rather accept the outcome in good faith. All election one and 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 one Contributing the Transition Committee Chairman for the Council Area, Honorable Eman Weke, in his remark, regretted that the community has existed in absence of a traditional ruler, commended the President General Electoral Committee and Security Agencies for the flawless exercise. Speaking on behalf of others, the Chairman of the Electoral Committee, Chief Oke Chukura, lauded the peaceful disposition of the participants toward a successful pool. In his inaugural speech, the new traditional ruler promised to inject meaningful development and throne peace, as well as championing youth empowerment, among others. What I will do is, uh, well, like I can say peace, but I have to bring the town uh, together so that the town will move forward up there. I'm giving thanks to the PG and his executives who try hard at this point for today to be uh, a day to be remembered. It's not only my victim. Describing the election as a milestone and remarkable achievement of the community, a stakeholder, Sir Ben Azogalanya, was optimistic that the dawn of the new era will reduce the rates of crime and usher in positive indices in the area. Praise God, energize the new monarch. It's a thing of joy. Since I was born, I have had this for the first time. So it's something that every men and women of Unkele's Naka will rejoice about. I cannot bring a failure fellow. So all the more tongue na buy in we went after several years of the hung. The atmosphere at Oze village compound of the new monarch depicts the mood of happiness as youths and the aged converge in jubilation to share in the joy of the victory. From Oze village Unkele's Naka, Odenaka, Wolisa, ABS News. On the news tonight, Nvibo residents in Abuja celebrates New Year Festival. Village elections in the Philippines claim the lives of three people. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. The news returns up to now. Stay tuned. My son has always dreamt of being in the spotlight. That's why I give him Born Vita for everyday vitality. That gives him the strength to pursue his dreams. Born Vita, strength to dream. There are certain moments in the day when I need my me time to just unwind and indulge. Now available in 30 grams and 400. You're welcome back to the news. 
October is usually the month in the Ibo, the world over, celebrates Yam as the king of crops in thanksgiving to God for his mercies towards them. In Abuja over the weekend, Ndebo tripped out in their numbers to celebrate and thank God for safeguarding them despite all odds. ABS Abuja Bureau Chief Ekwi Ajide tells us more. Cutting the yam on behalf of Ndibo residents in the FCT, the SNDBO Nwosibe prayed for God's continued sustainability of the people. The president of Haneze Ndibo Worldwide, Chief Emmanuel Iwanyangu, reminded the Igbos that they are a special breed that cannot be subdued by any kind of antics and charge them to be ambassadors of the race wherever they find themselves. Be a good ambassador of Ebola. Know that you are no man, or you are man, or you are youth. Know that Ebos are people who are honest. Ebos are people who are very hard-working. Ebos don't go to seize anybody's property. Wherever we go, we know that the land belongs to other people. We negotiate by the land to build. For our former governor of Anambra State, Chukwemekai Ezife, Ndibo are the most united but often misunderstood owing to their individualism and independence. No group in Nigeria, even smaller group, are as united as Igbo people. This is the only truth. But because of our individualism, republicanism, we don't have a king like Opa or Emir. But we have a democracy that is very strong. The National Organizing Secretary of the Labour Party, Clement Ojuku, who was recognized as Ogom Bandibo in Abuja, called for peace and calm, saying that even though his party does not like the outcome of the 2023 general election, it will always preach peace because another four years is just around the corner and they will surely take over. The, the act that says Eblish Aimek should come up with better guidelines for INEC so that there will be better elections in the future. What we had from the Supreme Court was not justice, but a judgment. So, but I will tell my people to be calm and be peaceful. Iwajin Dibo in Abuja tagged, united we stand, divided we fall, was an opportunity for the people to showcase their cultural heritage through dances and masquerading in Abuja. Princess Ikwi Ajide reporting. The federal government and International Fund for Agricultural Development Value Chain Development Program, FGNFAD VCDP, has appealed to benefits in states in Nigeria to cement their partnership by paying their government cash counterpart contribution, GCCC, as and when due. The Knowledge Management and Communication Advisor, FGNFAD VCDP, Mrs. Vera Onyeka Onyilo, who made the appeal in Oka during a one-day training for extension agents and liaison officers on the eight participating council area, said a timely payment will enable them to brainstorm with the state government on how the program can be scaled up into more council areas. Agriculture correspondent Shibuzo Bidike filed on this report. Which centered on criteria for identifying beneficiary success stories and basic photography skills for field officers unveiled the guidelines, steps, procedures, and standards to be adopted. Mrs. Onyeka Onyilo noted that the essence of the training was to build the capacity of the targeted participants for them to be able to document project success stories at the grassroots, while charging participants to also look out for success stories in the mainstreaming areas like nutrition, financial inclusion, climate change, gender, and women empowerment. Mrs. Onyeka Onyilo affirmed that VCDP's templates, model and standard in training farmers on good agronomic practices have continued to record uniform yield among beneficiaries. This is more like a yearly review with the LOs and the EOs to see how to improve their skills 
in documenting success stories. So we need to do this to orientate them so that when they are documenting, they also have this at the back of their minds. The state's program coordinator, FGN IFAD VCDP, Mr. Nnam Diaguncha, said that they aimed to upscale the reportage of success stories recorded by the program at the end of the training for proper design. Mr. Aguncha, represented by the state's knowledge management and communication officer, Mr. Henry Anaboso, requested for the provision of basic photography skills for effective capturing, documentation, and reportage of success stories from beneficiaries. With the help of this uh, extension agent and uh, who happens to be the field officers, they are more closer to the farmers than we. So from them, we can get or achieve more of the successes from the field. In an interview, one of the extension agents from Oka North Council area, Mr. Paul Ifezulike, who listed insecurity and lack of mobilization as the challenges that hamper easy access to farmers, appealed for the approval of their budget for effective service delivery. The form of an appeal to the program ends to try and help us reach, um, prepare most of our budgets because at the local government level, we rarely have budgets and it kind of like make our job a little bit difficult. But this is something that we have passion for. It's something that we enjoy doing. For me as a young staff, it's what I enjoy doing. I love making this impact. And I don't really look at the distance or the area that I have to go to. My major target is to ensure that I get there. For some other participants, including Mr. Izuchuku Mbachu Azia, a cassava farmer from Asia Community, and Mrs. Antonia Mokwe, a rice farmer from Oboro local government area, acknowledged that they have recorded numerous success stories in their farms and credited them for the knowledge garnered from the many capacity building workshops organized for them by the FGN IFAD VCDP. At least three people were killed in the rest of southern Philippines on Monday as millions turned out to vote for village leaders following months of deadly poor-related violence. Security forces were on high alert across the country as a long delayed nationwide vote for more than 336,000 council positions got underway. While villages are the lowest level government units, the council posts are hotly contested because they're used by political parties to cultivate grassroots networks and build a support base for local and general elections. More than 300,000 police officers and soldiers have been deployed to secure polling stations in over 42,000 villages. Remember, you can follow news and programs on ABS in many parts of the world by liking our Facebook page, follow at San Ambra Broadcasting Service, subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television Orca, follow on X at ABS Radio TV, and join Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. To end the news this evening, a recap of the main point. Annabra State Government has pledged to complete all road projects and initiate new ones. Annabra State Association of Women, the United States of America, has organized free breast and cervical cancer screening. Nvibo residents in Abuja have celebrated New Year Festival. Village elections in the Philippines have claimed the lives of three people. To end the news, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has called for a total turnaround maintenance of the Edinburgh State economy and promotion of Koibu values. Let's give him as more support for the task ahead. And that ends the evening news at this time on ABS Television. Thanks for watching. I am Friska Monko. Good evening. <laughs>